Cubs dropped to the Padres yesterday. Dansby Swanson and Ian Hatt both struggling. We're going to talk about why and the consistency that they haven't had since the injuries to the two Cubs stars, Cody Bellinger and Seiya Suzuki, who, by the way, are coming back. Finally, an off day, though, for the Cubs. And I want to remind all you guys to check out the Kevin Alcantara interview. He was the guy the Cubs got for Anthony Rizzo, and he's a fast riser and a top 50 prospect in all of baseball. Cubs surviving injuries, Kyle Hendricks close to a return. All that right here on the Cubs baseball channel. Like and subscribe. Give us a thumbs up. It's a great way of saying go Cubs. Hit that bell because when something breaks, you know we're going to jump on and tell you about it. Let's get this thing going. Let's fly the W. Well, we can't right now, but we will next win. But you're still invited to the channel. And there he is uh, at the game a couple of nights ago when the Cubs bushwhacked the <laughs> – you like that? Somebody gave that to me, but I'm going to use it for you guys as well. They bushwhacked the Padres and won the game. Anthony Pasquale, I'm Mick Gillespie. Welcome to the Cubs baseball channel at Broadcaster Mick, at Ant Pasquale 3. So before we talk about how great that game was, since then the Cubs obviously uh, lost – to the Padres, they lost the series. They ran into Dylan Cease. I wish the Cubs never would have traded him. Yeah, he's got uh, some revenge on his mind when he oh played man, the Cubs. He shoves on us. But let's start with this. You wrote an article about Dansby Swanson and Ian Happ both struggling. And, I mean, the struggles are real, man. Yeah, I wrote it um, a few days ago. It should be dropping on Cubs HQ um, today or tomorrow. But uh, the numbers I was looking at primarily were Dansby – Swanson, Ian Happ, and Michael Bush. But Michael Bush, we don't have to talk about because he saved the game two nights ago and uh, has still been showing some promise. But basically, once Cody Bellinger and Say Suzuki came out of the lineup and starting from the first game that they were both gone and Ian Happ and Dansby Swanson have been kind of called on to take two and three, three and four, three and five in the lineup, they've been struggling mightily. The, the stats on it here, since Bellinger and Suzuki both left the Cubs lineup, Swanson's hitting just 167, I believe, with three homers. Ian Happ hitting 196, no power at all, and they've combined to strike out 38 times in just 14 games. That's almost an automatic two strikeouts per guy every game. Like, you just can't have that. No. Look, I, I'll, I'll say this here on the on the bad side. I've never felt like these guys were difference makers. I think okay. they're good players, right? Yeah. Like, like I, I, I see them as good players, but not like Cody Bellinger to me is a difference maker, right? Say Ryan Sandberg was, was a dis maker. difference maker. Andre Dawson was a difference sure. maker. Sure. Uh, you know, um, Gracie was a difference maker, right? Chris Bryant and Javi Baez, difference makers. Rizzo. They, I just see these guys as like, you know, good players, right? Um, all-stars sometimes, you know, but they're not like elite all-stars, but they're, they're better than most when they don't have the protection in the lineup, they're not able to carry the team, you know, like, uh, I will give Ian Happ a lot of credit because as bad as he's been, he's still getting on base and his defense has pr been pretty good. I mean, he made a couple excellent, excellent plays in the outfield. Yeah. Padre series. And that's the thing about baseball, you know, like you, you're not always going to hit. Not everybody's Pete Rose, right? Not everybody can just, you know, ride through and, and put up huge numbers. I mean, you're going to have struggles like this. And when the offenses, you know, are diluted because of injuries, then teams are keying on you. Or maybe that it's just they're putting more pressure on themselves to succeed and, and it's holding them back. But I got to give Hap credit. The defense hasn't suffered. And he is also walking, so he's getting on base some. And then Swanson, you know, with Dansby, it's like you're watching Dansby and you're going, okay, here's a guy who is supposedly a great defender. Now, he has struggled with his defense, uh, and I get that. Like, the defense has definitely struggled there 
with Dansby. But I think part of that, too, is that you don't have an experienced first baseman. I've talked about that. But just seeing him when he hit the home run a couple of games ago and 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 the expression on his face, he's really wearing it right now. And I guess that concerned me a little bit more than I thought just because I figured that, you know, he was just kind of rocking and rolling through it. Look, he he's never, to me, been an elite hitter. He's been pretty good. Uh, he's been an elite defender. He's a leader and all of those things. But to have both of those guys struggling at the same time is definitely not a good thing for this Cubs team. Although, and we're going to talk about this moving forward, they were able to weather this, weather the storm and they're getting healthy right now. And the one thing about Dansby Swanson is like, he's obviously won a world series before with the Braves, but I don't know if you guys know this. He batted ninth on that team. They were yeah, absolutely right. loaded. He batted ninth and he's, he's a above average hitter. He's excellent defensively, but he's not a three hitter and Hap is not a three hitter. So once you get Bellinger and Suzuki back, which could be happening a little bit sooner, um, you get these guys in the sixth and seventh hole, and that should lengthen your lineup a lot more than it does having them in the two, three, four, five hole. I, I thought when the Cubs signed him and they paid him that money that it was a bit of a risk. And I honestly feel a lot more comfortable with him after watching him every day because I don't watch the Braves every day, but I do right. watch the Cubs every day. He's going through something right now. I think he's going to get it figured out. I'm, I'm much more of a fan of his after watching him run the bases, watching him lead, watching him, you know, he can hit. He's just not hitting right now. But this lineup is about to to start to click again because that you're getting back your best players. And I guess that kind of transitions right into this. Seiya Suzuki uh, today is going to have his second game with Iowa. The first mm. game went great. He's, you know, he's out there. I'll tell you two things. First off, he's about ready to go. He looks fine. The other thing is that every time they have one of these rehab games, Owen Casey hits like, you know, just some bombs, you know, like, know. <laughs> like you're just like, oh, it's it's like, hey, there's Seiya Suzuki. There's Kyle Hendricks. There's Justin Steele. And oh, by the way, there's another Owen Casey home run. Yeah. Owen Casey's going to he's a guy who's going to spend 10 or 15 years in the big leagues and he's going to be an institution. And, and you just it's coming. I'm just mm -hmm. telling you right now, it's coming. But let's talk Suzuki. Yeah, I mean, you look at this this Cubs team, and we talked about how dangerous it would be if they were able to tread water um, until they get these guys back. And here they are tied for first place with Justin Steele back, Cody Bellinger back. He homered two nights ago. And Seiya Suzuki coming back hopefully this weekend against the Pirates. Now you look at that team that was so uh, thin and struggling but still managing to get some wins. Now the band's back together, and this team could really go on a run, and it, it comes when they're about to play, I think, 14 of their next 18 or something like that against the division after going 30-something games to start the season without the division. They could really make a statement in the NL Central in the month of May. Yeah, think about this. Their last off day was in between the Pirates and the Astros series, right? So that goes back to a Monday in April, the 22nd. So it's been a while. I mean, yeah. and you think about the grind – that you it is playing every day. It's a grind because you 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 don't get to rest your your pitchers. We all know that this bullpen is not very good right now. Uh, you, you you're Craig Council's done a good job of getting out of them what you could possibly get out of a bullpen that's not that good. And you hope that maybe some of these guys click, or maybe you get Julian Merriweather back, or maybe you you bring somebody up from the minor leagues. And, and and they're able to to do something. You know, I've talked about Michael Arias in double A, but you know what? I mean, he's not not regressing, but it, it's it's it, you can see that there's still some more stuff he's got to do to get there. You know, I don't I, I haven't seen a, a lot on Porter Hodge, but they're both on the 40 man roster. The Cubs need some help and a trade could be coming. Uh, I, I, I'm not, I would not surprise me at all. We talked about this before. They're trying to make a deal right now. The problem is it's only May, right? And there's not many teams that are out of it yet, you know. So, you know, as you get closer to June and July, and teams are are you know willing to to make a deal like to to help themselves. The other thing you can do is you there's a team that's thinking they got a chance, and you think you got a chance, and and all of a sudden you make a trade, good player for good player. That's happened before. You know, go back and look at the Dennis Eckersley trade. You know, you you do that sometimes, right? Maybe if you could get like a a real legitimate 
back end bullpen guy, you might give up a starter. So we'll see what happens, but I'm definitely curious to see how Craig Council, when he starts to get these guys back, when Wicks comes back, right? When Hendricks comes back, we're going to talk about that. Hendricks not coming back right now, but when he does come back, you know, how do they put the bullpen together with those guys? The good news, though, is that we got Bellinger back, and honestly, he looks great. And now we got Sisea Suzuki Friday or Saturday. He's going to be back. And that's going to be great for the team. And, and the fact that these guys are still, you know, at the top of the standings when they didn't have those guys and Justin Steele really is a testament to the young guys and how they, they've helped out, how struggling players like Ian and Dansby, even at their, not their worst, but not their best, have fought and contributed. And the team's found the way to do it. So they finally get an off day and then you rest up and then you do it again. Yeah, exactly. And I think there's another glass half full kind of way to look at this. And it's the fact that you getting Steele, Suzuki and Bellinger back in a span of a week, you almost can view that as a trade. Like these guys are coming in back to your team to bolster what you have going. And um, I think the bullpen's going to take a little bit of a step in the right direction because you're finally starting to solidify some roles toward the back end. You've got Yancy Almonte, Mark Leiter Jr. and Hector Neris, who have kind of form that seven, eight, nine. And now you get to throw Ben Brown back into that mix as a guy who can eat a couple innings if you need it, or come in and, and give you 96, 97 um, out of the bullpen as well. Now that he's not in the rotation anymore. So you're starting to get some guys you can trust. Obviously you still need to see a little more um, in high leverage from, you know, love lady or Keegan Thompson, or even some of the guys in Iowa, like little, or if Quas makes a return, or Palencia off the IL, or Merriweather even. But I think, you know, you're resting up now. You're getting your full starting rotation back, which has been really good as of late. And right. I think you take a next step forward over this month or so, and that bullpen won't be as much of a joke, at least I hope. Yeah, I hope so too. You know, but I think at the bottom, the bottom of the, you know, of the page is that the Cubs went through some pretty serious injuries and they didn't fall apart. Right. And I, And I think that, goes to show how good of a manager Craig Council is. Just like steady, man, just steady. You know, just steady, Eddie. Just keep going out there, doing what you got to do. Um, Ian Happ hasn't helped. Dansby Swanson hasn't helped. And they still find a way to win. You know, they didn't do that yesterday. But they ran into a hot pitcher. And, and if you go back and you look at the losses that they've had, had the bullpen just did their job, I think the Cubs have had the best record in baseball right now, better than the Dodgers and better than the Braves. And you're talking about a team that that has star power, but doesn't have the star power that those guys have. Yeah, but we're but this team is dangerous. Absolutely. And every once in a while, you get a game like that yesterday where like you just lose, like you just don't have it. And honestly, the way it goes, it was nice to have it be painless and just be like, oh, we lost yesterday. Not like we were up four to three and then we gave up the lead and then we lost an extra innings like those sting a lot more sometimes you just lose and Dylan Cease was awesome yesterday probably still has a little bit of a punch to give to the Cubs for for dealing him uh back in 2017 but you know they lost that one against the Red Sox 17 to nothing they lost one against Cease the last time they played him sometimes you just get beat and you can live with that what you can't live with is giving games away and I hope those days are gone. Yeah, no, I, I'm with you on that. I, I'll tell you one criticism I have of Theo Epstein were, you know, was that trade and the fact that he would trade away the most elite prospects that you had in your system. Mm -hmm. And and I and I never could understand that. You look at the Dodgers, man, they make deals, but they don't give away their farm system. They they give guys up, but they're not giving away their elite guys. Dylan Cease is elite. He was great with the White Sox. Uh, last year, everyone on the White Sox stunk because, but you know, like now, <laughs> now, he's, because. now he's like, he's with the Padres now and I see him all, like, I, and I met him, you know, back when he was coming up and it's like, this dude is like, he, they've got him for this year and next year. And he's like going to be a top end guy for two years. They got a really good pitcher. Could have, could have came up with the Cubs. I, I don't know. I, I never was a, you know, uh, Quintana guy. Yeah. Always just seemed like an innings eater to me. 
but you know, whatever. I mean, you're trying to win a world series. So, you know, trade away all your top prospects and, and gut your farm system. And then that's why when he left the organization was in shambles. And that's why I've took up for, you know, and look, man, I've been in this thing for 20 years. I, I'm not just, this isn't shooting from the hip here. Right. Right. Um, I, I love Theo for what he did when he first got there. He was able to take what Jim Hendry had done and the things that he did. And they, they put the, it was the perfect storm. Yeah. Then after that, it just kept getting further and further and further away with elitism and, um, you know, just a, just this sense of entitlement and all of this stuff that the same thing happened with the Red Sox, happened with the Cubs. Jed Hoyer's come in. He And I've talked about this before. The guy's called a caddy. He's, you know, he's like always in Theo's shadow. The organization has gotten a lot better, and it's because of him. And I hope that he doesn't make those same type of trades. Now, would the Cubs have won the World Series? You know, had they not gone out and gotten Chapman? No. But you can't keep making those kind of deals and expect to have an organization that's going to help you win. And that's why the Cubs did not fold up when they were when all these injuries were happening, because they have an organization where you can bring up guys that aren't just going to go in there and shit the bed. I'm sorry. It's what we say in this world, right? They, yeah. You know, Canario was OK, right? Pete Armstrong was OK. Like, could be, 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 be could they be better? Yeah. But they were they weren't embarrassing themselves. Right. So, so that's my whole point here. And then you see this guy, and he's just – he would be like the ace of our staff right now had we not traded him over. But anyway, uh, talking about guys who could come back and help us, and here's one right here. Kyle Hendricks um, is pitching in Iowa again on Sunday. So I, I'm going to throw this at you, and then I'm going to tell you what I think. So now we've seen him in Tennessee. We've seen him in Iowa. We're going back to Iowa again for a third time. He did really well last time. What do you think? Well, I think first of all, um, you have to kind of hold your breath about Kyle Hendricks just because of like, for lack of a better term, how bad he was at the big league level to start the season. Now, was it a real injury or not? We don't know, but the fact of the matter is right now he's working through some things in the minor leagues and looking a lot better. Now here's the thing. Your rotation has been unbelievable the way it is right now with steel back then you go Imanaga, then you go Assad, and then Tyone has been great since coming off the IL, and then Wesneski's done more than enough to stay in the starting rotation, in my opinion. So I think maybe you would explore Hendricks as like your mop-up, long-inning reliever guy until you know he could start games because you can't put him out there every fifth day when Hayden Wesneski can give you seven shutout innings, and he's shown that he's able to do that, and we haven't seen that from Hendricks yet. But I do think he can help your big league club in one way or another just because he's depth and a guy that can get outs generally. So if he can prove that he can do that again, I'd love him on the big league roster again. I, I've been surprised at so many people in the comments section that have just buried Kyle Hendricks. I mean, think about <laughs> where we were in 2013, 2014, 2015, right? before we won the world series in 2016. Now, does that mean that you excuse a 12 ERA and the most home runs and no. runs? No, no, but look, man, there's, there is a part of this where this is still Kyle Hendricks, right? I mean, and he was is, good last year, right? And he was good last year. He was one of the best starters the Cubs had once he got back. But I mean, don't put this guy in the same mix as, you know, Dick Lovelady, right? <laughs> don't, don't, don't throw him out there with, you know, some of these guys that are, are, you know, coming and going and, you know, here and there. I mean, this is a guy who's one of the reasons why the Cubs won the World Series. And and I just think that there's a part of me that's like, hey, you know what? He deserves the respect of all of us as the Cubs fans for what he's contributed to the Cubs over the years. And he's honestly, he's one of the best starters. And look at his stats, I'll tell you that, that the Cubs have had you know, in the last 50 years. I'm not saying he's the best, but he's one of them. He's yeah. amongst that group, right? He's struggling. We don't know if it's a back injury. We don't know if it's the end of the road. It could be. It could be the end of the road. Everybody has one in this game, right? And when you throw, you know, 85, 86, 87, and you're right-handed, the end of the road could come faster. Sooner, yeah. Right. 
Uh, or maybe he's a right-handed Jamie Moyer, right? And he's going to figure it out. Jamie Moyer had struggles and then all of a sudden would come back and he's like, you know, kept on pitching and pitching. We're going to find out. So I don't know if there's really a back injury or not, but I do know that if he can get us some outs, he's got to be better than some of these options in the bullpen right now. If he can just get to the point where I, I, I don't know that he's coming back and going into the rotation. I, I hope not right now. I, I just don't think it'd be fair right. to the guys that have succeeded. But that doesn't mean that he can't come in and help this team immediately because that bullpen stinks. It's like, look, let's bring somebody in that just can come in and get some outs in some big spots, right? And I mean, is that? And I think he can do that. I mean, he's pitched on the biggest stages there there is. Now he's not going to be a closer, but yeah. I, let me play devil's advocate just for a second because you were talking about Theo and one of the um, things that I think he did that was a little bit wrong was hanging on to the core a little bit too long. I think they knew you that they were the gonna... story. What story? Uh, you want to know the story? The story is is that, and I'm going to take up for him is that everyone in the organization knew that. Everyone. That he was hanging on to them for too long? And he knew it. It was. Yeah, and, and that's what I'm he saying. I think that saying Kyle Hendricks deserves to be back just because he was on the World Series team is a little bit like Theo-esque well, in terms I'm of loyalty. I'm just saying with this bullpen, I mean, you know. And But that's that's what I'm getting to. If he could get outs, he has a role on the team. That's well, What the I'm saying is this, is that, is that he – and the rest of the organization, he's smart. He's really smart guy. He really is. And, he, and they were trying to figure out what to do with those guys. And they kept wanting to see the core be the core again. The problem is, is that after they won the World Series, it was like something changed and they weren't the same players anymore. And I guess it's because for the rest of our lives, we love those guys. And I'm one, I'm in that group. You know, I don't care what Chris Bryant does, who he plays for. I'm going to love Chris Bryant. I'm going to love Javi Baez. I'm going to love Anthony Rizzo, Carl Edwards Jr. I mean, any of those guys, right? Because they ended the curse. But it, it was a really tough dilemma. And 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 partly what you got to remember is back then, Cubs fans didn't want to see him go. And if they would have made the trades when their value was the highest, Theo and those guys knew that this was a very distinct possibility that they were going to turn into this. And so just just keep that in mind as you know as we talk about it. So I, I I totally get it. Now I'm not putting Kyle Hendricks in that same bubble <laughs> as those guys. I'm just telling you that uh I absolutely love uh Kyle and I and I hope that he can come back and contribute because if he can, you know, I feel like there's definitely a spot for him. Uh Kevin Alcantara, we talked to him. He's one of the top 50 prospects in baseball. Maybe he's a little bit, maybe he's like 57 in baseball. But uh, that interview is going to air today. So make sure that you look for that on the channel. Uh, he's a fantastic guy. We talked in English. I didn't bring an interpreter for it because he's working on English. I, I thought I could understand him. So, you know, I think you guys will as well. But he's the Cubs' fifth best prospect. And he's also a fantastic guy. And he's who we got back from the Yankees in that Anthony Rizzo trade. When we finally did make the trade, he's who we got back. And then, um, you know, so we'll, that'll be our third prospect interview. And we'll, we'll keep adding those kind of as we move forward. Cubs will face the Pirates starting on Friday, Friday at 540 in Pittsburgh. But I'll tell you what, Saturday, Ant, this one's – going to be really interesting to me paul skeens number one pick in the draft out of lsu led the tigers to the world series championship last year um he's kind of dealt with the same situation that you know the, the same pitch count deal that kate horton the cubs have put him under and i get that man like like I, that's what you got to do you put these guys in bubble wrap save those bullets for the yeah. big leagues but he's making his debut against the Cubs on Saturday. I mean, this is going to be some serious heat. Yeah. Well, first of all, he's making everybody in the minor leagues look silly. Like there's one, <laughs> there's one thing that you want the guy to develop, but at some point there's only big league hitters that he could be challenged with because he is just mowing down these guys in double and triple a. Uh, the other thing is it seems like all these teams are just strategically lining up their best pitchers to play us. Like 
you go back to the Brewer series and Freddie Peralta was supposed to be suspended. He appealed the suspension just so he could make that start against the Cubs and then decided to serve it right after and, and the Cubs beat him. So I just want to throw that out there. But then you get Dylan Cease on Sunday. You get Skeens or excuse me, Tuesday. You get Skeens coming up this weekend and Jared Jones, who is also a fireballer for this Pirates team. So uh, we don't have the official probables yet, but it looks like both those guys are set to pitch. And I'm a little bit worried about some of the Cubs hitters facing that type of heat. Skeens is 21, uh, AAA Indianapolis, uh, 27 in the third innings. He struck out 45 batters. <laughs> I know. Number one pick in the draft in July, $9.2 million, which was the largest bonus for an amateur uh, in baseball history, right? And um, he was at LSU. I saw him in college. 13-2, and two, a 169 ERA. Uh, you know, so he yeah, was he, like – killing everybody he struck out 209 batters in 122 innings last year <laughs> it's, it's insane would you say he's the biggest um highest anticipated prospect as a pitcher since what Strasburg yeah that's exactly it he's he's the the guy after Strasburg I I remember when Strasburg was coming up and it yeah. was kind of the same hype and you know Skeens is another really big dude uh 6'6 230 he's a right-hander and not a lefty but uh, he's got he's got velocity. He's he's just nasty. He's got a little bit mean. His fastball yeah. goes one hundred two point one. Right, he's got a so stash too. Loves that. Has a splitter, a sinker, you know, and all this stuff. So it's going to be interesting, man. They say that the um, that th they say that this guy could be the kind of the next big superstar of pitching in baseball. Yeah, well, hopefully the Cubs can hand him his his first career loss. That'd be nice. Like, let's start him <laughs> out on, like, let's just, just go in there and just pound him. Yeah. All right, what are you working on? Tell them about your story where they can read that about. Uh, yes, uh, I've got a, a few coming out. One of them about uh, Alexander Canario and how he sim seems to be heading down the Nelson Velasquez type of road. Uh, I've got one about Ian Happ, Dansby Swanson, some of the Cubs offense oh, struggling. You mean he's gonna We're going to trade him? It could be. It oh. seems like he might be going down that road just because he's blocked at the big league level. So we'll okay. see how that ends up. Um, and uh, they'll be on Cubs HQ on Twitter and, and the website. So find them there. If they trade him, please don't bring me another, you know, fifth, sixth. Yeah, inning give me guy. Mason Miller from the A's. Yeah, get somebody good. Like, because this guy's going to have a good career. Agreed. Get somebody good back. Mm -hmm. you know, no, no more, you know, we're, we haven't even talked about Quas. As bad as the bullpen is, nobody's going, hey, can we get Quas back here? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for hanging out with us. Make sure that you uh, are part of the channel. The, the um, a lot of you guys have subscribed. I, every time I turn it on, it's like more. And I can't thank you enough. And I love the fact that we get to hang out the Friday watch party. Again, the Alcantara um, interview is going to drop uh, today as well. Pro maybe even by the time you're watching it, it'll be out. But uh, for Anthony Pasquale, I'm Mick Gillespie. Most importantly, thanking you guys. Enjoy the off day for the Cubs. Yeah. And let's crank this baby back up on Friday <laughs> in Pittsburgh. Go Cubs. Go Cubs.